Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike back with another video. Today we're gonna to talk about what cardios I think you should do and how we should apply them before we dive in. Let's not lose our gains. Let's not mess up our lifting or our sport. I appreciate all the support on these last videos. Be sure to subscribe. Give this thing a thumbs up. Let's see if we can hit 1,500 thumbies up right here. Leave your questions in the comments below and I'll handle them in the next upcoming videos. Videos Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Let's dive in. So we did another video the other day about losing your gains and how much cardio is too much. Uh, there's a long debate, I think, going on in the world about uh, high-intensity interval training, HIIT training, uh, which is basically all-out spurts of cardio or conditioning of some nature uh, versus like a low-intensity, um, which may be walking, biking, something a lot more moderate uh, that you can do for maybe half an hour all the way to running a marathon is obviously low-intensity um, versus the high-intensity, which you're doing uh, maybe 10 minutes of because you're doing 10 to 30 seconds, absolutely balls to the wall sprints. I think there's uh, something called EPOC, um, after effect of basically oxygen consumption after your exercise, after your cardio. And it was long believed that the high intensity interval training, um, that you'll burn more calories in the 24 hour period because of that extra oxygen consumption because of how hard you worked. Uh, versus the low intensity. Uh, there is some uh, science I believe that says now that basically over 24 hours or 48 hours it will kind of even out um, given that you do the exact same amount of work if that makes sense. Uh, and I think more importantly we have to figure out what's best for you. I'm guessing majority of you guys are into your physique. You want to look good, you want to lift good, you want to be a strength athlete whether that's powerlifting, strongman, weightlifting uh, and keep some of your muscle. And through my personal experience and through what I've seen in the research recently, I am uh, the biggest proponent of low intensity training, uh, lower cardios. I ride my bike. Um, I've recently uh, basically moved into a more metropolitan area and I've talked about it before, but my bicycle is my number one form of transportation. But more recently, as I've wanted to get leaner uh, and I'm not so focused on my strength gains uh, that I've been using it as extra cardio. So I've been going for a half an hour to an hour bike ride a couple times a week. Uh, sometimes I push it pretty hard and I'll do you know, 16, 20 miles uh, in a day. And uh, this has uh, helped me a lot and still allowed me to train hard. Uh, what I think the downside of the high intensity training, interval training, is that it will take too much energy and too much recovery away from what we're trying to do with the barbell. Uh, if you're even an intermediate or let alone an advanced lifter, you need every bit of performance every session uh, to hit your best numbers of all time. And so if you're constantly trying to battle, it's kind of an uphill battle you're giving yourself. If you're constantly trying to recover from the high intensity sprints, whether it be um, hills, sled, even just flat sprints, whatever it might be, rowing um, or some kind of plyo circuit or something of that nature, I think the impact uh, on our performance with the barbell uh, is too great. Where if you can do low intensity, you may feel a little bit tired for the first week, two weeks, uh, but I don't think performance will be hindered at all, especially if uh, sleep and nutrition are locked in. And then two, uh, I think that it's also very good uh, to allow yourself to raise your GPP. And we talk about GPP a lot, general physical preparedness. Each sport has its own amount, um, kind of a different level. Powerlifting, very low. You know, you, be, you have to be able to do nine lifts, max effort in a day, three squat, three bench, three deadlift. Uh, weightlifting uh, a little bit higher just because of the output of the exercise, but it's still just six lifts in a competition. So your GPP is kind of down here uh, versus a basketball player, a soccer player where you're jogging, sprinting, uh, moving laterally. Plus you have to be strong, take some contact, uh, football player, etc. The GPP is much higher um, how you have to be. Uh, you have to have a very high level of fitness to perform those at a high level. Obviously, if your goal is football, soccer, basketball, something of that nature, you will most likely have to sprint. Um, just to get better at sprinting, to get faster, and to be best at your sport, to get in the condition to perform your sport optimally. Uh, but in that case, your lifting is always taking second hand. Um, your lifting is then an accessory to becoming the best basketball player, soccer player, etc. So the volume and frequency is way down. Uh, again, speaking generally to the strength athletes or people that want to generally look good, uh, a low intensity model um, mixed in with your normal heavy training focused in on performance, uh, eating at maintenance, slight surplus, even if you're in a calorie deficit, it doesn't really matter. I think it will allow you to be your leanest and your best regardless of what block or training phase you're in. If you're in a bulk, uh, doing a little bit of extra cardio will allow you to eat even more, perform even better, and again, uh, hopefully not gain as much fat during that bulk. Hopefully focused in on the performance of lifting, you get more lean body mass. 
Uh, if you're at maintenance and maybe you're trying to kind of recomp or something like that, I think it's only done uh, with good amounts of cardio. Uh, again, on the diet side, if you're trying to cut, obviously cardio allows you to eat more while still losing weight if you track your calories uh, and slowly progress through your diet. Obviously, there's tons of other benefits to both cardios, um, heart health. Uh, I think mental health has been the greatest one for me. I'm throwing on audiobooks, podcasts, or even just uh, soaking in some music, getting a little bit of sun, and really riding out. Uh, it's almost a form of meditation where I see my mind starting to race and run uh, about life and stress and everything like that, and I'll try to trigger and focus myself back into the audiobook I'm listening, focus back into the music and the rhythm of my cycling and my pedaling, uh, and I think... I've never really gotten a runner's high. I don't think I've gotten hard enough. I'm not much of an endurance guy. Um, but for me, it is a really good way to keep mentally focused through life, through everything I'm doing. Um, and I think a lot of people agree with that. So high intensity interval training, necessary if you're trying to play a team sport, depending. Uh, obviously, if you're a football player and things of that nature, can it be mixed in with strength training? I think it can. Obviously, I'd do it in a separate session or at the end of my uh, lifting. But I think optimally uh, for us strength athletes, whether you're trying to get into a different weight class, cut weight classes, um, even bulking, gaining, whatever it might be, doing less amounts, obviously, uh, than you are when you're dieting will still be best off for your physical and mental condition being that strength athlete. Again, I appreciate you guys. Hopefully you figured something out. I'm enjoying cycling. Let me know your favorite cardio in the comments below. Appreciate you. Catch you in the next one.